Shares of Korea's big online platform operators, Kakao and Naver, have been falling since regulators last week announced plans to look closely at their business practices as they expand aggressively into other sectors. They're accused of abusing their dominant positions in the market, hurting consumers and their contractors. For more on this, we have our Min Soo Kyun joining us in the studio today. Uh, Soo Kyun, welcome back. Thank you, Devin. Well, uh, Kakao and Neva shares extended their losses today, and in fact, uh, their shares are down significantly over the past week since uh, the financial, uh, since the Fair Trade Commission uh, made this announcement. Well, like you said, shares in South Korea's uh, platform giants, Kakao and Naver, have been dipping for days. Uh, the stock price of Kakao has fallen by 19.5%, while Naver plunged 9.5% over the past five trading days. In terms of market cap, the two have lost a total of 20 billion U.S. dollars over the last week as foreign investors and institutions offloaded their shares. So, Sukyun, what's the issue? Obviously, these two companies have attracted the attention of uh, regulators as their businesses have grown so fast uh, over the past decade. This uh, doesn't seem to uh, bode well. Uh, well, one major factor is the government's latest move to regulate sales of financial products on online platforms. Uh, last Tuesday, the country's financial regulators said that the recommendations of financial products by fintech platforms like KakaoPay and Naver Financial are against the Financial Consumer Protection Act, which took effect in March this year. Under the new law recommending financial products such as funds and insurance plans on online platforms is considered an act of intermediation and not an act of advertisement. And so fintech firms have been asked to make appropriate revisions to their online platforms. Starting September 25th, KakaoPay, Naver Financial and other fintech platforms will be allowed to com will not be allowed to compare and recommend financial products to their users unless they register with the regulators and receive a license or permission to carry out those services. So we started with the regulatory scrutiny and then you just told us about uh, the revision, the, the, the law to protect uh, financial consumers and now lawmakers are looking at other measures uh, that would uh, take further action to deal with the harm being done uh, to small businesses and contractors. That's right, Devin. So several lawmakers have vowed to take action against online platform giants due to their growing market dominance and rising uh, business expansions, I guess. Uh, Kakao, for example, has expanded its business uh, portfolio and currently has 118 affiliates under its wing, a significant rise from the 45 it had six years ago. Policymakers at this point feel it's necessary to protect small businesses as they believe small family-owned stores or retail shops listed as sellers on the platforms have not been protected properly. There's actually a few pending bills at the National Assembly aimed at preventing unfair business practices by online platform operators, which if passed will lead to tighter regulations on big tech. Well, all this pressure seems to have led Kakao to announce this uh, new fund that will actually be used to help small businesses. And they're also getting out of some sectors uh, where there are ordinary people trying to make a living. Yes, that's right. So following a meeting with uh, major affiliates on Tuesday, Kakao has decided to set up a fund worth 250 million U.S. dollars to support small businesses on its platform over the next five years. The company will also turn its investment wing, the K-Cube Holdings, into a social enterprise to fund key programs such as education and climate change. Also, Kakao Mobility will stop some of its services, such as deliveries of flowers and snacks, and Kakao Taxi will end its service that lets users pay an extra fee to hail a cab faster. Kakao Chairman Kim Bom Su said that the company will seek ways to change and develop more cooperative business models with its partners moving away from its previous growth model. The announcement of this so called coexistence plan is seen as a move to appease regulators and regain investor confidence. For Kakao to continue its business in the future, it should focus on its social responsibility to build a good corporate image. In this sense, the coexistence plan might have been announced after the company considered its long-term business growth and looked to clear its negative publicity. It also comes as Kakao Pay, the financial arm of Kakao Group, is preparing for an IPO before the end of this year.
Right, so shares of Kakao and Naver, as we discussed, uh, are down, and it seems like the pressure on them could still intensify. So what do you think the impact on their share price is going to be in the longer term? Well, the shares of the nation's top two platform operators are expected to gradually recover over time. Take a listen. Since Kakao has taken a step back following its Tuesday announcement to support small businesses, its shares will enter a calm phase. Neva, which is facing the same regulations as Kakao, will also see its shares recover. While there is a possibility that shares might drop again once some of their services face new regulations, experts remain optimistic about the long-term growth prospects for Naver and Kakao. So Korea is uh, tightening regulations on these two companies. It's also made headlines recently uh, dealing with Apple and uh, Google, some pretty landmark uh, rulings there. Uh, but what are other countries doing uh, in terms of reining in their tech giants? Well, countries around the world are moving to limit m the market power of tech giants as well. In June, the U.S. Uh, introduced five antitrust bills designed to rein in big tech companies such as Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. Meanwhile, China has also set tougher digital finance and anti-monopoly guidelines as well. In April, the Chinese government fined online platform Alibaba a record 2.8 billion U.S. dollars over anti-competitive practices. Well, it does seem that uh, numerous governments see a problem with the dominance of these companies. And as you say, they're taking action. So we'll look forward to uh, you following those developments for us. Thank you for your very thorough reporting today, Sukhan. Thank you for having me.